Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Arielle Adkins, and I am the founder of Artfully Aware, a movement dovetailing art and clothing. Um, this is my handle at Artfully Aware, and I share most of my work on Instagram and Twitter. And um, there you can see a peek behind the process of what I do. And of course, you can see some of my work here behind me as well. Um, but before we get into what I'm working on now, I want to give you a little bit of the history of Artfully Aware and how I ended up doing this wearable art thing. So I have always loved art. It's always been a big part of my life. And both of my parents were artists um, in different ways. My mom was super creative and did all kinds of different media from stained glass to sewing to sculpture. Um, and she was super cool. And she was a major influence in my life always encouraging me to create. Um, you know, we worked on a lot of projects together. We did a lot of collaborative work. Um, and I'm just really thankful that I had her as an influence growing up so that I knew that, you know, art was something that should be embraced and something that you shouldn't be afraid of. So she always encouraged that in me. And um, naturally, I ended up going to art school. Um, I focused on painting in um, undergrad. And after undergrad, I sort of struggled to figure out what my path in art was going to be. Um, you know, it, it's tough when you're transitioning from a student environment and figuring out your voice in your art and if art is going to be your full time thing, like, can you make enough money from it? Can it be a career? And I had a bit of a transition where I was working in the art world, but wasn't really making as much art. Um, and that was sort of a strange period of my life where I was figuring out what art meant to me and, you know, how it was going to be a part of my life as I continued growing up and, you know, furthering my career. But shortly after I graduated, as I was kind of struggling to find my way, uh, my mom passed away. And as I mentioned, she was such a huge creative force in my life and the person that really had encouraged me so much creatively. Um, and so after her loss, I started thinking about how I could create art to memorialize her in a way, but also to give me sort of a creative outlet that would help me cope with the loss, right? I wanted to make something that I could be proud of and feel like it was honoring her, but also just like have a creative release for myself. And that is when Artfully Aware started. So this is about 13 years ago now, which seems like a lifetime, but it initially started with me just dressing like artwork inspired by artwork and taking photos with a self timer. Um, and it was back during like the heyday of fashion blogging and I had a blog and I connected with a lot of amazing people through it. It was super fun. It gave me a way to sort of see outside of my everyday life and into a more creative life than what it felt like I had at the time. Um, and over a few years of doing that and really connecting, I found my way back into creating my own work and for myself, which was an amazing journey and something that I'm really proud to share about because it is hard, you know, when you try to figure out your own voice and it was a long process for me, but hopefully you can see where I'm going um, with this connecting back to the original history of it. So these are a few of my early pieces. Um, these were collaborations with other contemporary artists. Um, one is Carrie Schmidt and the other is Frances Carey. And I was really just exploring different techniques. Like how do I create something wearable that is inspired by a work of art? What does it look like? What does it feel like? How does it move? You know, all of these things and figuring out if is my art the piece of clothing? Is my art the photograph of it? Is it the experience of being in the clothing in the installation? Um, so this was a really big period of just exploration for me. I also did a whole series of kind of embodying and dressing up like artworks. So this was actually a lot of fun and it was more about finding ways that I could become the art, but I wasn't making the stuff myself. So the artwork in that sense and in that body of work is the image that exists of it. And this one was really fun um, at the Mauritius Museum 
when I was walking in and I came in in the clothes, but I hadn't done the head wrap yet. So, you know, people didn't know, oh, she might be doing like Vermeer's girl with the pearl earring. But when I walked into the gallery where the painting hangs on the wall, I sort of sat on the side and I started doing the head wrap and people started looking and they were like, oh my gosh, she's becoming the art. She's becoming the art. And it was this moment of just joy in the sense of like, appreciating art in such a way that you want to become it. And so I felt like that was a time when my goal of setting out to create wearable artworks, I really felt like I had found my passion and the reason why I was doing it. So I continued to explore through painting um, how I could actually paint myself into different environments. And um, this is a recreation of Van Gogh's bedroom. And, you know, the dress sort of is inspired by the location, but it isn't necessarily like fitting in exactly with the lines and the shapes. But I was just having a lot of fun with, you know, different techniques and what it felt like to kind of become a part of that world and what the artist had intended. So this was one of my favorite pieces and I actually brought it today, it's right behind me. Um, and this was an amazing moment for me because it was a collaboration with the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. They reached out to me um, when the exhibition was coming and asked if I would be interested in making a piece inspired by any work in the show. And I was like, wow, this is first of all a dream project, but also like, where do I even start? Like, how do I conceptualize this? Like, what piece do I want to work on? You know, what type of clothing is it? What, what style, what garment is it? Is it painted? Um, so it was a really amazing creative journey for me where I discovered these works and I really immersed myself in reading about them and learning about Hilma Offklint's process. And I actually started thinking about what is a shape or a silhouette of a garment that Hilma would have worn in the time when she was alive. And so that's how I landed on painting this full skirt um, because this was the style of skirt that she might have worn. And it's fully hand painted. It took me, um, everyone always asks me, how long do these pieces take you? This one was one of the longest. <laughs> times that I have spent to make one of my artworks, but I think it was a total of about 60 hours of painting and every inch of it is painted. Um, but my favorite part of this project was actually going to the Guggenheim when the museum was not open to the public, which is a dream, you know, it's like night at the museum. Like I got to see everything without crowds of people. I got to, you know, bypass security. I had two people with me that worked for the museum and they were just like, it was a free for all. I mean, I was basically running up and down the ramp, like just so happy. Um, but we had a photo shoot where they captured these amazing images, um, you know, and it really was this full circle moment where I was looking to museums for inspiration. And then a museum came to me and asked me to, you know, contribute something to the experience there. So I'm really proud of that piece. And it's one that I return to a lot as, you know, a, a formative moment for Artfully Aware when I felt like things were coming into stride. So around that time, I started thinking about what it would be like to have other people wear my works of art. And you might think, well, it's easy, just have someone model it. But for me, Artfully Aware was such a personal thing. Um, you know, as I explained, it connected back to my relationship with my mom. And it was really something that came about as a means of dealing with that. And so it was kind of hard for me to see what it would be like or feel what it would be like to have someone else wear that. And I didn't know if they would understand the meaning behind it. So one of the first times that I actually um, had other people wear my art was an amazing experience um, in Toronto, where a gallery there called Art Collectif brought me up for the Artist Project Toronto. And they wanted me to create wearable art inspired by some of the artworks at the fair. So I looked through the catalog to see, you know, what art was going to be there, what sort of struck my fancy. And I found this work by Mike Smalley, who I eventually got to meet. And he was such a lovely individual. We had a great um, collaboration through this. But it really felt important to me to show the process of how these things come to be. Because, you know, you can go to, into any museum shop and, you know, buy a scarf with an artwork on it or even a jacket or a t-shirt or, you know, all of these things. And so I was trying to figure out 
how to signify to people the process of how I make my work and, and that it's all hand painted. And so I decided to paint people wearing garments inspired by the artwork live in the space so people could actually come by and watch they could ask questions they could see the process they could experience how this all comes together and so then the next step was well who am i going to paint like who's going to be wearing these things um you know i'm not from toronto how am i going to find these people are they going to be random people and so hearkening back to the meaning behind my work behind our fully aware that is this really strong relationship of mine, I wanted to create a relationship with the community there. And so what we actually did was we put out an ad asking for models um, from the local community that were willing to be painted. And, you know, of course they got paid as well. And then we were gonna auction off the garments and then donate all of the money to a women's shelter. And so to me, being able to use my work to raise money for what I felt was an extremely important cause that also connected back to mothers and children, um, you know, which is at the root of why I started Artfully Aware to begin with was a really special thing. And so then we had these amazing women who responded to our ad for being our models for the day. And it was so fun to get to know them and just to hear in their perspective, you know, why they wanted to do this what their ambitions were. And I loved the fact that my work was able to shed light on someone else's beauty and someone else's inspiration. Um, and it was just a really special time for me to experience that. Um, and one of the young women here is actually um, a FedEx delivery person. And she said, you know, she, she has her job every day, but she always felt that she could do more and wanted to do more in art and creative fields and that this was a gateway for her to get back into that. And that like hit me so hard because I know that it was so difficult for me to tap into my creativity earlier in my career and thinking that, you know, someone having the experience of wearing these garments could find their own way back into creativity, whether it becomes a daily practice or just something they try one time, that's a huge win for me. So that was a, another thing that I'm really proud of. And so from there, I worked really hard to get other people to wear my work or to make their own wearable art. Um, and so here are just a few examples of lovely people who are part of what I consider the Artfully Aware community now, people who understand um, you know, how clothing can shift your mood, can change your perspective, can be an inspiration for yourself and for others. And that has been by far, far the most rewarding thing for me um, throughout this process is to really connect with other people who have found inspiration through wearable art. So now we're sort of up to the present day. Um, and I know a lot of artists have had interesting experiences in the past year with the way that their work has shifted or their perspective has shifted since the pandemic. But I'll just share with you a few things that I have done in the past that really were different than the way that I was viewing my work previously. So last March, um, you know, when things were in complete shutdown, it was an extremely uncertain time. And I was at home wondering what to do. You know, I wasn't able to go out into the world and find inspiration as much as I was used to. I wasn't able to go to museums. They were all closed. So I really sort of turned to social media to look for inspiration in how other people were handling the pandemic and, you know, finding ways to share positive messages. And I came across this hashtag, everything will be okay. And it just struck me because the words are so simple, but the meeting really, really, really impacted me to think that things can be very uncertain, but if we all come together in a feeling of positivity and believing that things are going to work out and we all do our part, everything will be okay. So just kind of on a whim, I painted this message on a jacket and I shared this photo on my Instagram and so many people responded to it saying that it really encouraged them and it was a message that they needed to experience at that moment and that they would want to wear that message as well to not only reinforce it to themselves but to show other people um, you know that we are in this together and that everything will be okay and so for the first time i 
created a t-shirt that had a print of this design on it that people could purchase through my online store and they could actually paint or color it in themselves or just wear it as is with that positive message. So I'm gonna just play a video here so you can see just a few of the amazing works from the community um, of people who participated in this project. And the best part was that I donated all of the proceeds to Feeding America. So not only were people able to participate in creating their own wearable art, something that was safe and fun to do at home, but they could share that message with other people as they were wearing it. They could send them as gifts and they could also know that the money was going to a very important cause. So here I'll just show you a few examples of what people in the community made. So that was super fun and I love it when I still see people sharing photos of them wearing that shirt because it is kind of an evergreen message, you know? So that was my first foray into making art that other people could easily translate and wear like a t-shirt form um, that wasn't a totally unique painted work that was sort of more art for the masses, I would say that, you know, really opened up my process to a wider community. And so that got me thinking about other ways that I could use my art to send a positive message or to, you know, show support for causes that I believe in and care about. And around that time, a few months later in June, of course, you know, there was a lot of action in the Black Lives Matter movement and there were a lot of protests and things happening, especially in New York City where I live and in Brooklyn um, due to police brutality and a lot of things that were happening um, in just across our country and people really coming together um, in solidarity for Black lives. And I've never been a big protester. Um, you know, I think that my place in society is, you know, to share a positive message. And I had never actually participated in a protest before. And I was a little nervous about, you know, what is my place and how can I support this movement, um, you know, without putting myself or others into danger? Like, what is the right way for me to activate at this time? And uh, what I decided to do was I bought a whole bunch of plain t-shirts from a black owned business in Flatbush. And I went to Union Square and set up a table and I taught people who were there how to make their own protest t-shirts. So I made a whole bunch of stencils of the Black Lives Matter fist and I had letters BLM. People could freehand if they wanted to, but the goal was to show people that what you wear can send a message and that it can bring people together or alienate people, but that it is a method of transformation to just speak and live and wear proudly the things that are important to you. And what I learned through this day spent painting t-shirts with people that I didn't know was that just the act of painting and putting a brush to paint and putting it onto the fabric was a transformative act for some people. Uh, the gentleman that you can see in this picture was, approached my table and he was really nervous about, you know, what, what is this? I don't know if I want to do this. Like, can you tell me more about it? And so I was explaining to him the process and that we were making t-shirts for Black Lives Matter and that he was more than welcome to participate. And he sort of stood by and kind of watched for a little bit, but wasn't sure. And so then finally I said, well, do you want me to start one for you? And then you can see how you feel and maybe if you want to do it. So we actually ended up making a t-shirt together. And at the end of the time when his t-shirt was ready to dry, he turned to me and he said, I haven't painted since I was in the second grade. And for that time that I just spent doing that, I wasn't thinking about anything else. And it really took my mind off of everything that has been weighing me down for a long time. And that just struck me as such an amazing moment, not only for me to just have a glimpse into the pain that, you know, he had been experiencing through everything that was going on, but also just the release that he was able to achieve even for just a few short moments while he was painting. And so 
that I love that story because I learned so much more and gained so much more from that experience. I'm sure than anyone else who came to that t-shirt stand did. And that is what I want to always remain a part of my art is like, how can I use my art to understand the world around me in a deeper and more meaningful way? And so we made about 50 t-shirts that day. You can see um, some other folks here with their stencils and lots of different colors. And it was really just a moment that I felt in some small way that I could show support um, through my art. Now, this is a recent project that was a really special one for me as well. Um, like I said, I really am more focused on creating my own work now, but I still go back to my work inspired by art because that's really at the core of Artfully Aware and how it started. So when I met Chet, who is uh, the individual in this photo, he was a security guard at the Museum of Modern Art. And I went to a public program that they had last year, right before the pandemic about how the security team in the museum were all extremely interesting and talented and creative people in their own right. And they actually had an opportunity to share some of their work with visitors at the museum, which was an amazing program. And just a really, really, in my mind, forward thinking way to help people see, you know, the people that are behind the scenes often are just as inspiring as those who are in front of the camera. So I got to know Chet and he performed some of his music and I began following him on Instagram. And he's such a positive human and just a ray of sunshine that I, you know, was constantly responding on his posts and just saying, you know, hope all is well. Like I would love to do a project together someday. And so we stayed in touch and he let me know a couple of months ago that he would actually be filming a video with MoMA that would be highlighting his favorite artwork in the museum, which is Claude Monet's Water Lilies that you see here. And the idea behind the video was to show how much his time spent in the space where the Monet Water Lilies had impacted him and how, what a positive reaction he had, no matter how many days he stood there, you know, guarding the museum or walking through on the way to his shift, he always felt the impact of that particular work. And so he let me know about this video and said, you know, he would love to wear something inspired by water lilies for the video. And of course I was like, well, we have to do a whole look, you know, it's gotta be head to toe Claude Monet. Um, and so I painted him this jumpsuit and actually a face mask too. You can see he's holding it in his hand, inspired by his favorite work of art. And one of the best times of that project was actually, um, giving him the piece so I went to the museum while he was on his shift to bring it and drop it off before the shoot and you know he was in his uniform and he was on duty and you know I walked up and found him in the museum and I pulled it out and he was just like oh my gosh <laughs> like he lost it he was so 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 excited and so happy and overjoyed with this piece and it just reminded me how much a piece of clothing can just change your mind but also embody something that's so meaningful to you right like this piece of art you know it belongs in the museum like you can have a poster of it that you can take home and put on your wall but being able to wear it is a way that you can truly express yourself with something that has changed your perspective and your mind in so many ways. So it was just such an honor to have Chet wear this piece and to truly embody the art in a way that made me feel like what I was doing, like this was the ultimate thing. This was like the ultimate accomplishment, my favorite project. Um, so also around the same time um, in the past year when museums and galleries sort of started shutting down and it wasn't as accessible to, you know, go out and do things and go to these events, you know, that I was used to participating in, I started exploring creating work inspired by nature for the first time. And these are just a few pieces that I did um, that are a part of a series that is taking the four seasons as inspiration. And what I really learned from this this process was about how difficult it is to work in a changing environment. Um, when I was creating artwork inspired by something permanent, 
it was fine, right? I could just look at it. I could look at a picture of it, whatever. But when I was out in nature, the light was constantly changing. You know, the waves were moving, the leaves were falling, um, animals were coming and going. There were different sounds happening around me. And all of that experience, I, to me, I feel is embodied in these works because as I was working on them over the course of several hours, I would have to kind of start over in some parts because things would change. And then I would notice that the light was a little bit more pink in a certain area or that, you know, now there was a sunbeam where before there was a cloud. And that was an amazing process for me just to experience sort of the more fleeting quality of nature. And I really enjoyed that series. It was also a, a moment for me to sort of step back and think about how can I translate what I do into something that's inspired by nature, but is not directly visualized as the scene that it's taking place in. And so this is something that was kind of mulling over and over in my mind for the months that I was working on this. And, you know, I've done abstract work before, but I really wanted that nature connection, which felt so important to me. But I didn't want it to be a direct representation anymore. I wanted to push myself to see how I can make it an abstract version of nature. So just a couple of weeks ago, I did my first residency um, at Soundview in the North Fork of Long Island. And for that residency, I wanted to push myself to experiment, experiment with my nature work, but as abstract pieces. And so what I ended up doing that helped me to sort of see my work in the process differently was to collect things on the beach, you know, shells, coral, uh, seaweed, different things like that. And I had a whole collection of things um, by the end of the week. And then I was doing watercolor paintings of them, just small ones in a little watercolor book. And I started looking at them and thinking, well, what if I just sort of honed in on one part of this image and that became the painting on a piece of clothing? And so how I was able to translate this into my process was to cut out viewfinders that were in the shapes of garments and actually hover them over the page of my sketches and find out where was the best composition that I then translated into a painted garment. So in this photo, you can see, if you look closely, a conch shell and some coral, but then there's a little jacket cut out and a little dress cut out. And so those are the pieces that I used to move around to find the composition that I was gonna paint onto the clothes. And so using that process, I created an entire collection. This is my first Artfully Aware capsule collection. And they're all hand-painted garments, all inspired by abstracted forms of nature and things that I found on site during my residency. So this was different for me, not only because it was completely abstract, it was completely my own work, but these pieces all relate together. You know, I was thinking for the first time about how one piece belongs in a collection and how it's different, but also similar to the rest of the parts of the collection. And that was a really different thing for me to do. You know, I had always created kind of one-off pieces that were each their own, you know, not all of them are masterpieces, but some of them I consider masterpieces, but they were all individuals, you know, they were all one of a kind. And this was the first time that I really thought about how they related to the other pieces of the collection. And so this felt like a huge win. I felt really proud of what I had accomplished during that week. But at the end of the week, I was just thinking about just the origins of Artfully Aware and how I could tie this back into where I started, you know, with the inspiration that my mom gave me, her creative input in my life, and, you know, my need to continue to move forward, but to also memorialize her through this work. Like, how did this connect back to what I was doing previously? What was the thread that sort of has drawn all of my work together as a cohesive project? And I started thinking about who would wear these pieces. And where I landed with this was that it had to be a mother-daughter pair that could truly embody the nature of what I felt with my own mom and the creative spark and joy and collaboration that we had together in our relationship. And so I asked um, my friends, Jane and Margot, who are the sweetest mother-daughter couple um, who are both 
extremely creative in their own right and are always, you know, collaborating and even have given me amazing ideas for my work. I asked if they would be willing to model the garments. And uh, my friend Isabel Para shot these photos. And the goal with this shoot was really just to show the creative energy that can flow through a mother-daughter relationship, whether it's your mother by birth or by choice or a family member, just that creative energy that you have that is a very special relationship that you only have with one other person. And I'm so, 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 so in love with these photos because it really feels to me like a full circle moment um, from where my work started when I was just trying to figure out, you know, what am I going to make? What is my impact through my art? What does my own art look like? How can I deal with, you know, immense loss, but also find creative joy through the process. And I'm so happy to share these photos and show that it feels that I have come a long way through my art to a place of joy and happiness that I can only say that I'm here because of my work and because of just art being in my life. So I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about this process. You can find me on Instagram at Artfully Aware. I share a lot of behind the scenes and, you know, recent work that I'm working on, but I would love to hear from you. And if you have any amazing ideas or want to wear a piece of my work, please get in touch. And I hope to hear from you soon.